It's Patrick Hutzel from Intensive Care at Home, where we provide tailor-made solutions for long-term ventilated adults and children with tracheostomies by improving their quality of life and where we also provide tailor-made solutions for hospitals and intensive care units to save money and resources whilst providing quality care. In last week's blog, I talked about the 10 quality features to look for when it comes to home ventilation and tracheostomy. You can check out last week's blog by clicking on the link below this video. In today's blog, I want to present another intensive care at home case study to add on to our long list of case studies. So today's case study is one-way extubation at home for a newborn baby. Today's case study is somewhat unique as it's a one-way extubation at home. For those of you watching and you haven't heard about one-way extubation in this context, it's basically removal of life support by removing the breathing tube or endotracheal tube and the ventilator for end-of-life care. This happens in ICU, pediatric ICU and neonatal ICU regularly and it's often not the right environment for patients and their families. Thankfully, with accredited services like intensive care at home, patients, their families and ICUs, pediatric ICUs and neonatal ICUs can extend their end-of-life care or palliative care services into people's homes, which is more often than not their choice. So let's look closer at the case study. So Serena was born with hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, also known as HIE, which is a type of brain damage that occurs when an infant's brain doesn't receive enough oxygen and blood. Initially, her APGAR was 9. A few hours after Serena was born, she had a cardiac arrest and she needed CPR, inotropes and intubation. After cardiac arrest, Serena received therapeutic hypothermia for four days and after rewarming, Serena had ongoing seizures requiring medication management such as midazolam, phenobarbitone, phenytoin, Kepra as well as pyridoxin. Day 5. Serena was seizure-free on those medications. On a respiratory level, Serena required intubation after CPR. She then had a brief period on CPAP only to be re-intubated after status epilepticus in needing further midazolam infusions. Serena had issues with oral secretions and protecting her airway. She developed a right lower lobe collapse which required deep suctioning. Serena therefore was commenced on IV antibiotics. She also had feeding difficulties and couldn't absorb nasogastric feeds. Serena's MRI was consistent with severe central HIE changes. Given Serena's ongoing neurology, the decision to redirect care in the comfort of her parents' home was made and Serena was transferred home on day 24 after birth. At home, Serena was electively extubated and comfort care with the palliative care team and with our intensive care at home team was made possible for baby Serena and her loving parents. The following medication was provided for baby Serena's comfort and symptom management. Clonazepam, glycopyrrolate, Kepra, Midazolam, Morphine, Phenytoin and Paracetamol. A nasogastric tube was left in situ and a subcutaneous butterfly for administering medications post-extubation to avoid distress and provide comfort. Family and friends attended this ceremony at home with a photographer present to capture the last hours of baby Serena. This provides a nice contrast compared to providing end-of-life care in ICU, pediatric ICU or neonatal ICU. It also provides holistic end-of-life care, where the family and their needs are fully considered. At intensive care at home, we felt very privileged to be able to provide this service to Serena and her family as well as to the referring neonatal ICU. End of life care for ICU, pediatric ICU and neonatal ICU patients should and will become more mainstream because that's what patients and families want. It creates a win-win situation. 
It gives patients and families what they want. It frees up in-demand, expensive and highly sought after intensive care beds. And it cuts the cost of a five to six thousand dollar per bed day ICU bed by around 50 percent. And if you want to know how we can help you to get your loved one out of intensive care, including palliative care or long term acute care, also out of a nursing home, or if you find that you have insufficient support for your loved one at home on a ventilator with a tracheostomy, or if you want to know how to get funding for our service, or if, or if you have any questions, please. Just give me a call on one of the numbers on the top of the website or send me an email to patrick at intensivecareathome.com. That's Patrick just with a K at the end. It's patrick at intensivecareathome.com. Also, have a look at our career section. We are currently hiring ICU and pediatric ICU nurses for clients in the Melbourne metropolitan area and the northern suburbs. Mornington Peninsula and in South Gibson, Victoria, also in Sunbury. We are an NDIS, TAC and DVA approved community, serv community service provider in Australia. Also, have a look at our full range of ser full service provisions again on the link on our website. We have also been part of the Royal Melbourne Health Accelerator Program for innovative healthcare companies. Thank you for tuning into this week's blog. This is Patrick Hutzel from Intensive Care at Home, and I'll talk to you in the next blog next week. Take care for now.